And this is about that you cannot talk about the war, or if you are going to understand the war, you're not going to understand it through some interviews or by reading history books. You can understand it best through poetry and music. This is what some interviewees are saying. Now, this seems to be a pretty strange thing to say, don't you think? That you can experience war only through poetry and music. So what exactly do you think the interviews of Alexievich wants to say? Actually, there are several of them. So several of them mention more or less these things, poetry or music or um, inability to talk about the war, though we already discussed the inability of talking about the war. But what do you think about okay. understanding the war in this way? Yes, I am. Maybe music can um, truly convey the feelings and experience of people who was in the world. Um, mm -hmm. For example, by music, we can convey all suffering that happened with uh, the people during the war. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. oh, I, I see. So it could be. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, continue, please. And also poetry with its special structure, melodic, melodic structure. This represents people who experience the war. So, um, but before I thought that uh, many songs and poems were uh, many and poems were written at that time was created. At that time, was in order to rise the spirit of the military. The spirit of the military. Mm -hmm. Why are you hearing myself? Why are you hearing myself? I see. So, but uh, look, maybe. Um, so, Ayana's point is the following: only through music. Let's let's focus on the music right now, and then put poetry later on. Only through certain kind of the music, you will be able to convey all the suffering and bad experiences and everything which was going on and all the trauma uh, and the drama, what was going on in, in on the Eastern Front and anywhere else where these uh, women were fighting. This is actually what many people believed, and this is uh, conveyed in Shostakovich, Stalingrad's um, symphony um, and so on. Do you think this was what they were thinking about? Maybe perhaps someone else has any other explanation about the role of music in uh, conveying the experiences of the war, apart from the suffering, trauma, um, and uh, all the bad things which were going on there? For me, in the music, me, in the music and just so, like free so, like for free for people so you can uh, you can um, express your feelings express your feelings without properly any, without um, any orders to like, orders to, to, like to the what was to the, and all the years you can uh, years you can uh, take uh, like note of all of it of and just of it uh, and just uh, as write as, as, as you as it was for you as it was for be you more and more, be and more and like more like Closer to take, closer to take. Why in the second way? You second more like it's more like more just describing the real describing the real world. Very good. So what Marim is saying, just to summarize her point, is that poetry and music are limitless. They do not have the strict boundary. Um, and since experiences of the people are also not having the strict boundaries. Expressing your music and music poetry, poetry is going to be going to a be much closer close to the original to experience than if you were to write an autobiography or to uh, help some historian write a history book. Anyone agrees or disagrees with either what Ayana or Merim were saying? If not, we can then move to our next question. I can. I can. Wanna, I wanna add something. Oh, okay. Please go ahead. So, um, so um, I, I, I agree with, with Ayana. Ayana. Mm -hmm. And I think that music effects more gives more effect for people, uh, whether they like 
um, are elderly people who participated in the war or not uh, or others. So um, I remember the thing um, in 9th of May in the day of victory, um, there was a, a parade and so uh, they were going on some music from from that time about war. And all the, I remember one moment, uh, the very sad song played and all the people started to cry. So that's already tells that music affects more, uh, gives more effect. So um, elderly people who participated in the war started to cry and then all the others. So it was mm -hmm. like that emotional moment and everyone felt that the war uh, was hard and that stuff. I see, I see, I see. So um, it um, it doesn't only convey the suffering, it um, moves emotionally the survivors yeah. and their ancestors and everyone else uh, engaged in the um, memory um, of, of, of war. Uh, very good. So um, what's her surname? Krotkaya, right? Yes, partisan uh, uh, Krotkaya. So she mm -hmm. describes a scene during the war, there was some mother of the soldier who mourned her own son. And then she saw there are a lot of other killed boys around the dead body of her son. And then she went on and mourned each of them as if each of those boys were her own sons. Now, mm -hmm. what do you think that Rotka wants to say with this story, and what do you think Alexievich wants to um, mention by citing um, this exactly scene which Rotka is describing? Um, it, this situation uh, is similar to the one about nurse, where she was telling that she kissed the soldier who was dying, and mm -hmm. that so, uh, that nurse is uh, his uh, girlfriend, and. Um, so uh, I think uh, in war it was very important to have a human connection, and uh, they. Had, I think people there became uh, uh, like brothers, sisters. All of them became more closer, and even they uh, didn't have any uh, blood connection. So um, it was about human connection and. Uh, uh, it was important to tell, to make, to tell that uh, they are together and do the same thing as kissing, as uh, mourning, uh, yeah, to, to feel that they, are, uh, they have people around and they care about them because everyone's dying around. So what Nurai is saying is basically that war, as we saw before, makes a lot of people do certain things which they otherwise would not do. In most of the cases, those things are inhumane, cruel, dishonest, evil, as yes, remember. But in some other cases, it makes them to do certain things which are very humane and helps them to preserve their humanity. And one of those things would be mourning, even seeing no, even someone who you never seen in your life. Mm -hmm. um, Nargisa, do you want to say something? I saw um, you on the uh, on the screen. Do you want to add something to what Nurai yes, was saying? Yes, I wanted to say that I think this scene shows the wisdom of a woman because um, she understood that uh, she realized that uh, some soldiers, they didn't have like mothers by their side. And she wanted to like um, to make them feel like home, like the one who were dying. Like she felt like they were still like alive, and also there were soldiers around her, and she made um, her action. They made them cry because I think they all miss their mothers, and uh, what she did it was like so wisely from her. So, yeah. mm -hmm. So what Nargiza is saying is that um, she assumed the role of the mother for all of those who did not have mother by their yes. side at this very important moment. And this was um, uh, special uh, from her uh, side. 
in general, as we have seen, what this uh, point shows is that humanity can be preserved. Perhaps rarely, but uh, sometimes the humanity can be preserved even in these uh, extraordinary extreme situations. Nargis, yes. Uh, yeah, I think the same. Like it's a, a kind of sense of compassion uh, from a mother to other mothers, because in here it says that my sons, my dear ones, your mothers uh, do not see you. They don't know you're being put in the ground, and the ground is so cold. The winter cold is cruel. I will live in a state of them, and it's like I do the job. Like your mothers uh, didn't have the and uh, didn't have the chance to be here with you when you're dead. But, uh, I will take this chance because I had the chance to be with my son, so I will take this chance and I will mourn and weep instead of other mothers. And it shows that your sense of compassion and understanding between mothers. Like she, she's a mother and she understands the feeling of other mothers. How they do they feel when they lose their children? Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, anyone else wants to comment either what Nargiza or um, um, Nargis was saying? If not, we can move on to our next question. It's with a very uh, distressing story of the fighter Kasheshkina. So Alexievich brings the story of this fighter in two parts. The first part is the events which happened during the war, if you remember. And the second part is what happened after the war. So the one very interesting and distressing detail is that her husband was caught by the Nazis and he did not commit the suicide, even though it was kind of expected of him to kill himself. He didn't do it because as a matter of fact, he didn't have a gun to kill himself, or at least he didn't have bullets or something like that. He returned from the war home, and even though he was a patron, and even though he fought in the war, everyone thought about him that he is a traitor. So, what is particularly distressing for you when you are reading this confession of the fighter Kasheshkina. And what do you think in general, like a general message Alexievich wants to bring with her story? Whose question was this? Uh, uh, I think it's not fair like to judge them as traitors because they uh, went to the front, they fought for the country, but um, but, but they didn't uh, dare to so commit the suicide. But and after the war, when they came home, so we cannot um, treat them as a traitors, and it's not fair because they put all their life to fight for the country, but it's, um, for them, maybe it was so hard to commit the suicide, so it's not fair to say that they're crazy. I see. So you would say uh, this was a too harsh of a judgment from all these people who um, were not actually, you know, they were judged by the people who didn't go to the war. They returned to their uh, hometown or village or whatever. And they are judged by people who they're not seeing. So they say, oh, you were a prisoner in the war, then you didn't kill yourself, so you're a traitor. Right? So Sarfan, as you think, they judge them too harshly. We're not right to judge them. Uh, yeah, basically, there's a probability that he's a traitor, actually. Even uh, Sadin refused from Islam because he was captured by Germans. So there's a probability that he's a uh, traitor actually, because when he didn't keep himself, the Germans uh, could make him such uh, things that he, he could tell some secrets of Soviet Union. Uh, so, you, so you say that he was tortured and under the duress he could uh, then 
reveal certain kind of secrets, right? Yeah, of course. Like most most people, if you is tortured, so he couldn't. Uh, so he could tell. He can tell actually, like uh, most information. So would you say that the person who is caught by the enemy soldiers has a duty to kill herself or himself? Do you remember this story about two bullets? Uh, one of those women who is interviewed says, "We all have two bullets in our in our guns yes. for ourselves, and in case it misfires, again for ourselves." So, do you think that mm -hmm. this was correct? Uh, I think so, because when you are captured, when you are tortured, when you share information, like because of you, like hundreds of uh, soldiers. Uh, with that so it's like basically would anyone disagree with some for us uh, i think that if they commit the suicide because uh if they catch you so of course they will get a lot of information from you but if you don't commit suicide um uh, still other people cannot judge you as a traitor because it's so difficult to, uh, to commit a suicide. But uh, do you understand? Uh, this was a very harsh judgment, which people, uh, which was actually perpetuated by Stalin himself. So at the end of Alexievich book, we have a story about one um, woman who had this very same situation uh, or a very similar situation, and she says that. Um, husband or brother doesn't really matter could not behave in the same way as Stalin expected uh, them to behave even though Stalin himself renounced her his own son for being caught yeah. and there is a the sentence like the Germans offered him to exchange a general uh, for the for his son and he said I don't exchange soldiers for, for generals right uh, so, do you think it was too harsh to renounce your son for not killing himself um, while being caught by the trade? I think it's kind of a um, imperative which many people will not be able to obey because it's too demanding. I mean, I, for one, would not kill myself if I were to be caught. <laughs> Nor do, so or would I think that I have a, a duty to do so. But you seem to be very, very strict in your moral codes. It's a sense of responsibility. Oh, so you think it's a sense of responsibility? Um, I have no responsibility. I have no responsibility. <laughs> Anyone? It's not a sense of responsibility. You don't have a kind of a responsibility to do that, or everyone can do it. Maybe it would be better for you not to be tortured, mm -hmm. end up with this uh, kid, and uh, do not be tortured, do not be, do not suffer from them, because they anyway will be torture you in order to get some information uh, from you, and uh, it. I don't think that it's the pleasant act 